Hey everybody, this is Joshua from Tiny House Basics and welcome to another live Q&A. It's been a while since we've done one. Um, so today we have a theme. Uh, we are going to talk about Tiny House trailers and we are going to discuss flush cross members and some of the options that you can get on our Tiny House trailers. Uh, a lot of people ask um, how to outfit and set up their Tiny House trailer to make it easiest to build and also to make it most cost effective as well. Um, so we're going to uh, basically have an open Q&A. You can ask me questions. I'll be happy to answer. Uh, but I'm kind of going to explain in the in between uh, uh, some reasons uh, why you should choose certain options over others when you're uh, building on a tiny house trailer. So um, flush cross members, basically those are the structural ribs that run side to side um, on a trailer. So here is, well, here's a copy of our book. Uh, but you can see right here, these are cross members. So they run side to side um, on the trailer. Uh, they're spaced every 16 inches. Um, so these are what is going to hold your subfloor of your trailer. Uh, another components of the trailer is right here. These are the axles. Uh, well, these are the tires. And then the axles run right there. Uh, these center beams that run from front to back, that is called the mainframe. Uh, these outer rails right here are called the outriggers. So on our trailers, you can choose any width from 92 inches to 102. So 102 inches is the max uh, legal limit without permits. Now, if, oops, sorry, call coming through. Um, so if you choose um, the max legal limit of 102, with siding and trim, you'll be, be a little bit over that limit, and you may have to get a wide load permit depending on your state. Uh, but many people uh, choose to be permanently temporary in their tiny houses. Like ours, for instance, we chose a deck width of 102 inches wide. Um, so we are a little bit over that legal limit. But our tiny house has been stationary for about four and a half years now. So uh, we travel because of it. Uh, we don't travel with our tiny house. Um, it would be a little bit cumbersome to travel with it, having to pack up. And if you've seen our feed and been following us for a while... Um, it would be a good amount of stuff to like pack up. So, but that was never really our intention. Um, and over the years, uh, many of our customers, I'd say like 99% of our customers don't travel with their tiny houses. Um, they travel because of them. So going back to the cross members, um, like I said, it, they are these ribs right here. And when you get a trailer, they, sta they come standard about three inches below the deck. That allows you to build a wooden subfloor and drop it inside the trailer. Uh, a popular option um, that saves you time, money, and materials is to get them flush like this. So when you get them flush, you can lay your plywood, you can lay your insulation directly inside the trailer. And I'll show you a little picture on an alternate phone. Uh, so they are kind of like this. If you can see, this is when you get flush cross members. Um, you can lay your insulation inside the trailer ribs and start going from there. Uh, another common question uh, people ask is, what role do cross members play in the subfloor of my tiny house? So they could have two functions. Uh, one, they provide the support for the wooden subfloor. If you have them in their default position, the three inches below that I mentioned, uh, below the top of the frame. Two, they can be the subfloor uh, when you order them flush with the top of the frame. Um, that is a $100 option on our tiny house trailers. Uh, when you order them uh, flush with the top of the frame, you can use the trailer as the subfloor. And therefore, you could save time, money, materials, and weight. Um, you can install your insulation, like I mentioned, directly inside the trailer frame, uh, like that picture I showed you. Um, and then you can lay your tongue and groove plywood subfloor directly to the trailer deck. Um, so going on to there... Um, how would you install the plywood directly? Let me adjust this. How would you install the plywood directly onto the trailer using flush cross members? So after you uh, put in the insulation, you have the flush cross members right here. You can see how they are flush with the top of the deck. You have your insulation filling in that gap. Um, you could also use uh, other insulation filler right there to fill in the gaps. Um, First, you want to make sure your plywood you are installing is running lengthwise of the trailer. So we are going to 
there we go, get some glare. So we're gonna run the uh, plywood front to back. So that's the front of the trailer, that's the back. So you're gonna run it lengthwise. And if your trailer's eight feet wide, like most of them, so your middle seam is gonna be right in the middle between two sheets of plywood. Um, so the long side will be front to back and the short side will be across the width of the trailer. Uh, this will allow you to use each sheet to span across most of the cross members. So you're going to have an eight foot long section. They're 16 inch spacing. They're going to span across most of them. Um, you will also want to use tongue and groove uh, style plywood. So each sheet will interlock and add strength uh, in the space between the subfloor support. So a tongue and groove plywood, you're going to have the uh, groove right here. And then the other sheet of plywood kind of looks like this. So it kind of interlocks like that. Um, and when that is running, when that groove is running lengthwise across your cross members, it's going to give much more support uh, for your subfloor. You're not going to have any squeaking or creaking uh, once your uh, you know house is built and your, in, your flooring is installed. Um, so a popular, uh, you might want to check what is available for uh, subfloor thicknesses. You, we used on ours an inch and an eighth. Uh, tongue and groove plywood um, and yeah so that's usually we recommend you going with a one at least an inch um, thick plywood um, so to secure it to the trailer um, you'll use a heavy duty construction adhesive to secure each sheet to the trailer and you follow that with pre-drilling uh, for each screw since this is very stick <laughs> this is very thick steel um, it's a really good idea to um, pre-drill into the uh, steel trailer. Uh, for actually attaching um, the plywood, you'll want to do six inch spacing in the field. So if we look at this is a, a sheet of plywood, this little tiny thing, we'll imagine this is eight feet long, four feet wide. Uh, you'll do six inches uh, on the perimeter. And then when it crosses over like cross members right here, you're going to do uh, 12 inches in the field. Um, and glued and screwed to the trailer deck. Um, the screws that you would use, uh, you would use a wood to metal screw. Um, you can get those at Home Depot. Um, after we do this live, vi any, uh, live video, um, I'll have a link to an article talking more about the flush cross members, and we'll also have links to the materials that we recommend using. So to secure the wood subfloor to the trailer, um, you could use a wood to metal screw. Um, those are readily available. Uh, when it comes to all fasteners, whether nails, screws, uh, bolts, nuts and bolts, we always recommend getting the best quality uh, fasteners you can get, um, especially when it comes to a high, um, you know, a very unique thing like a wood to metal screw. Definitely get, uh, you know, only usually a couple bucks more to get the better quality one, but always get the best quality uh, fasteners you can get. Uh, question, uh, plywood or OSB, uh, for our wooden subfloor, we used, uh, I'm trying to think we use plywood, uh, many builds we've done OSB. Um, I feel like, uh, for a plywood subfloor, just getting a really high grade CDX, uh, OSB is really good. Um, so I, it's kind of, sometimes it comes down to preference. I like them both and use them kind of interchangeably. Uh, let's see. Next tip, when you are, after you get your plywood subfloor, actually before you even start to that point, uh, one thing we recommend doing that will help out, sa help save a lot of time um, is mark. Uh, these are customers of ours uh, building on a bumper pole trailer right there. So if you see right here, right underneath Victoria, uh, there is tape marking on the sides. So that marks the location of each cross member through the length of the trailer. Uh, that will really help you out a lot when you have the subfloor down, you don't know where the cross members are exactly. Um, and so when you are planning your plumbing or where you're gonna be drilling through the trailer, if you have these marks like this, you'll know exactly where your cross members are. So you won't start drilling into a cross member if you didn't intend to. Uh, this is also very helpful when you are doing the uh, screwing in the field of the trailer. Uh, you can have the tape on both sides and then run a chalk line side to side uh, from this side of the trailer to the other. 
so you'll know exactly where the cross members are so you can secure them uh, properly into the trailer deck. So uh, if you guys have any questions, you can go ahead and pop in and ask them. I'll be happy to answer them um, and I'll continue going. So anything to consider um, before I start my subfloor, uh, a couple steps to consider. How will you seal off the bottom of the trailer to hold the insulation inside the subfloor? Uh, one option is to install the flashing yourself. Um, we'll have a link to uh, how we've done it on ours. We did that on our particular tiny house. I've done it on several of the trailers. It is definitely not the most fun uh, to do, uh, but it's it can save you about half the cost in, uh, you know, it can save you a good chunk of change if you do it yourself. Uh, but it's about, depending on the size of the trailer, like a full day or two days worth of work to do it. Um, so you can use like a sheet metal underneath. On our tiny house, we used 14-inch uh, wide uh, rolls of sheet metal and secured it underneath the trailer. Um, I will show, I'll pull up a picture and I'll show you. Uh, a second option is to actually get the flashing installed at the factory uh, when we build your tiny house trailer. Um, so we have that available in all of our uh, factory locations and the flashing is uh, welded and painted to match the trailer. Um, it'll go directly on the bottom of the trailer. So let me pull up a picture and show you what that looks like. Um, let's see, I'm trying to find Instagram. Sorry, this is a backup phone. Um, <clears throat> let's see, so a picture of the flashing. Let's see. Here's kind of a good picture. So this is um, a picture of Jake's trailer. This is a 35 foot trailer. So you can kind of see there is like a belly pan underneath. Um, that serves the purpose. Uh, that is the flashing. So that serves the purpose of holding the insulation. Um, let me see if I can find, oh, here's a better picture. So this is a trailer we designed uh, for a customer in California, and this is uh, this has a porch because they're going to build a tumbleweed design tiny house. Um, so this has the flashing underneath the trailer. Um, so that makes it that speeds up the build a lot. You could just cut your insulation, drop it inside, and then continue on laying the plywood subfloor on top of it. Um, so we have that available in all of our factory locations on any size trailer from. 10 feet all the way up to 56 feet, and we could even do it on our 10 feet wide, 12 feet wide trailers, and you'll get that on the lower deck as well as the uh, gooseneck. Um, let's see. Next topic of discussion. Um, how would you secure the wall framing to the trailer? So let me pull up another picture. So when you're building on a trailer, uh, there's a couple things to take into account. Um, you know, one, like I just mentioned, is how are you going to secure the wall framing to the trailer? And how we recommend doing that is, uh, from all our locations, actually, we offer threaded rods. And these threaded rods, uh, which in this picture right here, you can see it is that. I painted it uh, teal. Uh, but it is a threaded rod that is welded around the perimeter of the trailer. Um, so that would be located at all the locations of the king studs in your framing plan. Um, so the stud that runs from the uh, toe plate all the way up to the top plate, um, unobstructed by windows or anything like that. Um, the standard default location we put them in is about 10 inches before and after each fender, uh, 10 inches uh, from each corner. Uh, and so we include those, uh, we're able to offer those at all of our factory locations. Um, so to actually tie it into your uh, house um, and to secure your wall frames to it, we recommend getting these. These are uh, Simpson HTT4 or HTT5 Simpson Strong Ties. Uh, the four are a little bit shorter. The five is longer. Um, so this right here, you would take the... Let me get my finger out of the way. Oh, there we go. All right, so the threaded rod would be that uh, stud right there that comes through uh, the base plate and you would drill a hole in your wall framing and that would come up right there. And then this is a king stud, this wood right here. And you get this attachment and you'd nail it to the king stud and then you bolt it down. Um, so that's how you would tie the wall framing to the trailer. 
Um, you can get those uh, Simpson Strong Ties um, at Home Depot, at Lowe's, any building supply uh, company. And those uh, cost about, I think they're like 20 to 25 bucks, uh, depending on location and also the size. So the HTT4 is a little bit shorter. HTT5 is much longer and you can have a lot more nails. So, I mean, there's like 15 nails to secure that. Um, so that is how you would tie the wall framing directly to the trailer deck. Um, so you can either use a uh, half inch or five eighths inch threaded rods. Um, you can find those rods um, at Home Depot, like if you wanted to install them yourself. Um, you know, if you don't have your floor plan totally set up, um, you don't have to get them on the trailer and you can add them later. Um, you can either weld them or uh, paint them to match. I mean, sorry, weld them or drill through the trailer frame and bolt them up. Um, so you can get three foot lengths of those threaded rods and then cut them uh, to the size you need. We usually recommend them to stick up, um, say, at least like five inches above the deck of the trailer, five to seven inches at least, so you can get through the uh, wood framing and have enough uh, purchase, as they call it, so you can get the uh, nuts and uh, washers around it. So hopefully I didn't lose you guys on that. So, but yeah, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm going to do another story with a link to an article that discusses kind of what we're talking about now. Um, so you can kind of see those pictures that I talked about and also some links to the materials and a little bit more details about the flush cross members. So, um, yeah, and uh, let's see. I will scroll through. Let's see if there's any questions. If you guys have about the flush cross members, anything I missed, uh, please save this video. I will save it. And uh, I will, maybe I'll put it on our Facebook page or possibly IGTV. Um, I don't think I can do it in stories since it's already. Um, so Somebody says doing my flashing uh, with leftover metal siding. So yeah, when it comes to flashing, you don't have to use like a sheet metal uh, we've had customers use like a vinyl siding. Um, you could use leftover roofing material. Uh, many customers that have done um, uh, spray foam insulation have not done flashing. That way, um, when they finished the framing of the house, they did the spray foam insulation inside the house. And they also had the company do underneath the trailer. Uh, because when you're doing spray foam insulation, um, a lot of times they have like a minimum job charge uh, to come out there and do the insulation. Um, so it would be very expensive just to have them come out and do the spray insulation underneath the trailer. Uh, but if you skip the flashing, uh, you run all your plumbing, your waste lines, and then you have the uh, spray foam insulation company come out, do the walls. They can do underneath the trailer at the same time. And it usually is like negligible in extra cost.